Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach and this is my little internet show about whitewater things. Today I want to give you some advice on rowing the middle fork of the salmon at low water. This isn't perfect advice, this is just my advice and just share some thoughts. A lot of people are getting out in the middle fork this summer and have some questions and thoughts and wondering what it's like. I have some video I want to show in a minute, but first I'm going to give some advice and then show the video. Before I do, please take a second, please hit the like button. I really enjoy the likes. Subscribe if you want to. Helps me feel cool, helps me grow the channel, and yeah, it would mean a lot to me. So in terms of rowing the middle fork at low water, some quick advice is it's really about the first 20 miles. That's where it's the most technical, where it's the least amount of water. So getting through the first 20 miles is the trickiest part. And the key is just taking your time, not being in any massive rush, choosing your camp so you can just sort of take your time in the rapids and not make any big mistakes. Uh, I would say let air out of your boats, deflate those tubes, make it kind of slide over, slither over rocks. If it's pumped up tight, it's just gonna stop and hit rocks and be really hard to get off. Also wear good shoes. Don't even wear sandals because you're gonna be in the water pushing and pulling quite a bit probably. Good shoes that stick to rocks when they're wet to protect your feet. And uh, I also say spin to win. If you get up on a rock, just spin spin off of it and keep the momentum going. So spinning down the river when you hit rocks is a really good idea. Don't just get stuck on a rock and try to pull it off. If you get stuck on a rock, just accept some angular momentum uh, to get yourself off. And finally, just be really cognizant of boat spacing. If somebody's in a rapid like the chutes, for example, and they're stuck and you're right behind them, you're gonna plow into them potentially unexpectedly and cause a pileup. So you really wanna make sure that the the boats get through the crux of a rapid before you enter. And this can take time. Unfortunately, it just takes time. Like a boat's gonna go down, you're gonna wait for it, it's gonna get through the crux, then you're gonna go, and all the boats do it one at a time. And you just don't want this big boat pileup that creates messes. Now, if somebody is stuck and they, they signal to you to come on down and bump them, awesome. But be thoughtful about it. Please don't unexpectedly hit people. So there's a lot of, unfortunately, there's just so many channels uh, so many decisions you have to make, and you'll, you'll figure it out generally, uh, but I'm gonna share with you here a, some videos of sort of the crux places and talk about what to do at different flows. This video is at 2.1 feet, which is gonna be here in a couple weeks, uh, and it gets, definitely gets much more difficult as it gets lower, but this is just a good idea of what it's like. Here we are at First Bend Rapid. This is the rapid just below put in, and this will give you an idea of what's coming up. Uh, here people are watching you, so you might be a little bit nervous because everybody's in the eddy looking down. And these first rocks, it's pretty easy to get stuck. And so you want to just kind of be careful going through there. And this wood is a little bit nerve-wracking. You know, a lot of us are afraid of wood for good reason. Uh, but it's generally not in play. And there's just a nice little shoot to take through here. And at all low flows, this chute goes. It just gets a little bit tighter. You're going to come out of that with some momentum. And there's a lot of rocks you can get hung up, especially as the water drops. But you just got to kind of figure it out here and, and use good boating. To me, the key to a lot of this is good oar management, good shipping, right? So you know, Nick gets stuck and he, he, he spins off. I say spin to win because that worked really well. And yeah, he did great. This is a, a part above Murph's Hole. Again, there's some big stack of wood on the left. It's intimidating, but generally not in play. And this is just typical shallow water boating. You see Nick ships both oars correctly. And when I say shipping the oars correctly, I mean blades forward. You notice how he put the blades forward and still had control of the oars. If you push your handles forward, your reaction times are going to be slower. ship on the right and there's just a lot of boating like this as we get started dodging shallow rocks kind of moving around and the style you want to kind of get into that works the best is you need downward momentum so you need the boat to be moving downstream so if you hit a rock you power over the top so you'll notice he's just kind of like pointing his boat where he wants to go pushing downstream do a lot of this stuff so he can keep momentum as he goes and it, the boat is tracking. So where he pushes it, the boat generally does go. Not to say that you're not gonna be pulling off things, uh, but a lot of the in-between stuff, you just wanna keep pushing that boat downstream to keep momentum so when you hit a rock, you hopefully power over it. 
The next big rapid that's kind of tricky for people is Doors Rock. And you come around a bend, and there's a big rock in the middle of the river. And you need to get pretty far left here to miss it. It's a tricky move to get left. But once you pass it, you have to get back right, especially as the water drops. As it gets lower, you have to get really hard left and then get really hard back right so you're going to get stuck on those rocks you see in the left over there. Pinball's tricky. This one is one of the trickiest ones. It doesn't look like much. You're going to kind of go into a casual and and uh, think it's not a big deal, but there's some really shallow parts. This is where you typically see five, six boats just stuck in rocks as you go. Uh, you have to you just start down the middle, but you basically want to get left and as left as you can the whole time. As the water drops, this part right here where you want to get left, you're just going to get stuck. Like Nick does a good job of going over all this stuff. But as it gets lower, or even at this flow, you're going to get stuck right there. And you can just kind of deal with it. But afterwards, you're going to be able to make choices. You're going to look downstream and see a lot of open channels, you think. Uh, and some of those aren't open. And they have a lot of, there's a lot of sleeper rocks in there. So the best line, in my opinion, is just to stay down the left bank here. And go between this, these rocks here. There's a little chute here. And there's a rock here you can get stuck on the entrance, but it's not a big deal. If you do, just pull yourself off. Great ship, great right or ship there. And Nick made it look really easy. It's 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 a tricky wrap, and a lot of people make bad decisions and end up at dead ends in there. So again, you just enter center like you have to, and then you get yourself left. And stay left. So for slides, a great rapid. Uh, you can scout this one pretty easily. Uh, you can eddy on the left above here and walk down. It doesn't hurt to scout this one. It just takes a few minutes. It's an opportunity to take some photos. And uh, you generally want to enter on the left over here. There's a lot of rocks in the middle you see there. And there's a tight move you're going to make here between that big rock out of the water on the left and this water that's just cut, this rock that's just covered on the right. And there's a log there. You see that log on the left, his left oar is about to hit it there. Uh, that is intimidating, but it's generally not in play. I sometimes put my bow up on it and just slide off that log. And below here, there's just some tricky rocks to miss, some rock dodging. Around the corner, lower sulfur slide, there's a really ch tricky left to right move to make in there, uh, but I don't have video of it. So once you get through upper, uh, just be aware of lower. Ram's horn's pretty straightforward. Um, I like to start right, personally, and build momentum to the left because the water is going to be deeper on the right and just build momentum, go over some of these shallow rocks here. There's definitely a line that, that works really well. And then just watch out for these, these walls. Make a great job of shipping his left oar there, shipping his right oar, and then just pull off the wall. Hell's Half Mile is tough especially the entrance. And here at 2.1 feet, it goes, but once it gets down to 1.9, 1.8, 1.7, this entrance is brutal. And you're probably gonna get stuck at lower flows. Nick does a great job in negotiating all these rocks. And at 2.1, it's not too bad, but you're basically going to get stuck in this entrance. And so I like to send one boat at a time through here, uh, let a boat get stuck, let them get off, then the next boat comes down. And so, once you get to this first part, you see that big boulder on the right, the big one on the bank on the right. Once you pass it, you really want to be driving left. There's a really big right to left move we need to make here. And a lot of people get stuck in this section right here. So you'll see he's aggressively getting himself to the right. Uh, if you can push, that super helps because you want to try to build some momentum here. But you need to watch your downstream orders. You notice he switches to a pole. And the more you can drive left here, the better. There's a couple of rocks coming up right there in front of him. Those two rocks right there, the one you see by his right oar, they stick a lot of boats. And sweet boats get stuck there all the time with the water. Below here, the rest of Hell's Half Mile is just really fun, pretty straightforward. There's plenty of water. This last little 
the little channel is interesting. Uh, it's good technical water. If you're a California boater, you'll love this. Just good technical boating. That right oar ship, that left oar ship, oar shipping here is key. And he has access to his oars right away once he goes through. Next is Velvet Falls at high water. A lot of flows. This is the hardest rapid. This isn't at low water. It's not too bad. This is the entrance of Velvet Falls, which is the trickiest part. There's actually three distinct ways to go here, uh, and that messes people up. I like taking ore boats through these between these two rocks if you can position yourself well for it. But boats get stuck in here all the time, hung up. So just have good have good boat spacing going in in case somebody gets stuck there. Once you're past that entrance part. Act, the actual rapid velvet falls, the drop up here, is pretty straightforward. Nick is setting up pretty nicely. He's going to take the left line, so he's setting himself up to go left after the rock, which is a traditional higher water line, but you can also just plop right over the falls in most boats. You just go straight, it's a nice little three foot drop, it's not a big deal. Nick's doing the traditional pull behind the rock, left line. But more to the right, if you're straight, you can just plop over that. That's where the sweet boats go in the water. So after a velvet falls, there's a few miles of just shallow rocks, pretty straightforward. There's a section people call the upper chutes, I call avalanche atolls. That is brutal, right above here. And it's just shallow. There's not really a rapid. It's just really shallow water with a lot of rocks. And so you just, once you've gotten to the chutes, you've just basically pushed and pulled your boat. You're probably tired and annoyed. And you enter this. And you can see the entrance of the chutes is no picnic. There's a lot of shallow rocks here. Nick knows the line, so he knows exactly where to go from the previous week. But if you don't know where you're going, you're going to struggle. That's just the reality. And you should just plan on getting stuck. And if you're with the group, I would send one boat at a time. Let them get through this initial part, and then maybe send the next boat. Once you get through that entrance part, that again is shallow and tricky, and if you mess up, you mess up, that's fine. Uh, and especially when it's lower, you're definitely going to mess up when it's lower. You want to get left of that rock, these are beautiful ships, and then back to the right. Nick bounced off those rocks, and he got a little bit too far right, and is about to get stuck on the rock. And this is just part of it. I mean, it's hard to have really good control of a big, heavy boat in shallow water. Uh, you know, oars are just big tools. They're like using a hammer to do surgery. And so he did the best he could. He got stuck. And this is just part of the game. He did such a good job up, up above. Uh, he probably was, like, pretty full of himself. And I would have been, too. And it, it's normal to make a mistake here. So... Anyway, the first thing he's doing is just pushing and pulling the oars. He doesn't really want to get out. This water is moving really fast. And so, you know, in shallower water, I'll get out and push a lot. But here, you know, that's a potential place to have a foot entrapment. Uh, you don't want to slip and swim the rest of this rapid. So he's going to do everything he can to stay in the boat and get the boat off. So he's just trying to push and pull uh, with the oars, trying to spin the boat, trying things out to see what he can do. In the chutes, if you're a big group, it's kind of a good idea to, if you have a kayaker, uh, to send somebody down here uh, just for support. They don't have to save the day. They don't have to throw ropes over. But, you know, at some point, if Nick gets tired, he can be like, hey, come out and push on this. You know, if it's, if it's safe, if it's responsible, or if he does want a rope. But getting through here by yourself, getting stuck like this, is hard. Nick is strong. He's done this a bunch. He's really good at this. Uh, but if you're not, having some assistance here is certainly helpful. So once he's, again, once he's tried pushing and pulling the oars, uh, he's basically going to just try to tug on the boat different ways. He can do this by grabbing straps or parts of the boat. Um, sometimes I'll take my flip line out of my PFD, clip it onto a D-ring, and pull on that. But just by kind of shaking the boat back and forth, he can just keep moving the boat inch by inch over the rock. And, and the one thing I really want to point out here is he's taking his time. He's not in any rush. A lot of times we feel like we're, we're people are waiting on us. We can do as fast as we can. But it's really important to just take your time, be safe, don't get hurt. You'll also notice his oars, when he's not using them, you just saw his right oar, he's, put, he's hanging up on the spare. 
And so you don't want your oars dangling down in the water. It's because as soon as the boat comes off, they could get jammed in a rock and break or hurt you. And so he's very cautious. See, the left oar is up on the other spare. He's putting his oars somewhere that are out of the water when he's messing around. So taking your time and being thoughtful about your oars is super important. And again, he's just doing a lot of just micro changes to what's going on. And it came off. His oars are ready to go because they were they were up on the spares. If they were to hang in the water, they might be hitting something and he may not be able to get to his oars very quickly. But he did and he can finish this run out. And and at 2.1, this run out isn't too bad. Um, it's kind of covered. But as the water gets lower, all these rocks start showing up. And this run out's pretty tough too. So powerhouse is up next. Uh, it's, this isn't the hardest one at low water, but this day there was that log you just saw on the left, uh, which made us go around the channel, the normal channel, uh, which made, just makes it trickier. And so here at upper powerhouse, this entrance is it's just shallow again, especially when you don't take the normal channel. And so this is just the trickiest part. And it gets stuck again. Again, he takes his oars, gets them up out of the water, gets them somewhere stable. In this case, he feels pretty comfortable getting out of the boat because it's not really fast moving water. He has awesome shoes. Those are 510, 510 River uh, shoes, River, I forget what they're called, but they're the class River Tennies, the 510 River Tennies. They're awesome in wet water. He jumps out just a quick push and is able to get back in, ready to go. Again, because his oars were stored well, you know, he's able to grab them really quickly. Great shipping there, by the way. Great forward blade shipping. The correct way to ship. And the rest of Upper Powerhouse is pretty straightforward. There's some just to make for sure. And now we're kind of coming around this corner, heading into Lower Powerhouse, which is just a really fun long rapid. The crux at low water is right here, uh, getting right of these rocks, that rock in the middle. Uh, that gets much more difficult at low water, and then getting left of that rock right there. So that maneuver in lower powerhouse is really the crux. Not a big deal at 2 feet, 2.1 feet, but as the water gets lower, that's a very challenging move. And the rest of this is just sort of rock dodging, looking downstream. And just notice how he's trying to keep his momentum up. So if he hits a rock, he can go over the top. And he's tracking his boat. He's pointing his boat where he wants it to go and giving it little pushes. And it's just going to sort of move in that direction. So he's, he's, he's making his way down the river by just pointing and pushing a little bit uh, to drive it where he wants to go. The lower powerhouse is really famous for this wall on the right at the bottom. And a lot of people slam up against it. It's a great place to break an oar or maybe tear a boat. I don't know. But it definitely can be a hard hit. And if you you want to get left, but if you start left too soon, you'll get stuck on some rocks and maybe bounced into the wall. So I like to start right kind of where he started and then pull my way to the left like next to it. So you want to basically get right to left momentum by starting on the right. And then being able to just pull away from the wall as you close to it. So after that, there's a lot more rapids, all the artilleries and the cannon rapids, but you'll you'll generally figure those out. You'll get stuck a few places, but um, those are the crux ones. The last one is is pistol, and this is a good one to scout. So if you had an opportunity to walk down and scout it, I'd highly recommend it. There is a right channel over there that works for duckies. You can get light rafts down it, but you're probably gonna get stuck. It's very conservative to take the right channel, but you want to scout it before you do it. Uh, but we can take this left channel normally. 
And right about here, there's a you have a choice to go right or left. Nick is going to the left. You can see that sharp rock in the middle. You can also go to the right of it. You just have to choose which way to go. You don't want to go over that rock. That rock has torn a lot of boats. Uh, I generally go left because I think it's easier. Uh, but again, you can go right there. And then you just get finished up pistol. And you know, after here, there are a lot more rapids, but Pista Creek comes in, Indian Creek comes in. There's more water and everything gets to be pretty good. It's definitely challenging at low water, but I would say this first 20 miles up the Pistol is the hardest part. So that's the video. Hopefully it helped a little bit. Uh, again, the quick advice is deflate your boats, have good footwear, take your time, relax, and just take a thing about boat spacing. Don't run into each other on, on the river. Just be thoughtful of other boats. And if you like this video, like, subscribe. If you have things to add, comments, better ideas, you know, different lines, better advice, please add that in the comment section below to help everybody out with this because we're all trying to just get down the river and have a good time. And yeah, that's it for this episode. See you next time. Thanks.